Hey Beth, I'm supposed to be working right now, but uh, I'm gonna sneak in your uh, <clears throat> your uh, tag, your uh, soundtrack tag. I gotta just uh, make sure that I'm the first person to get an entry into this thread for the tag, for the soundtrack tag. And uh, I want to make sure that uh, I support you because you're my sister and you know I love you. Um, I got lots of soundtracks. Any past 1970? <laughs> a couple. <laughs> yeah, but usually they're older. I've, you know, got a couple hundred, but I got like 30 copies of uh, different versions and people doing South Pacific. You know, that's what you get when you buy lots of records. Anyway, first question. The first soundtrack you ever bought. I'm going to do some caveats on this. Is it the first soundtrack I ever bought? No. The first soundtrack I ever bought was the... Uh, uh, soundtrack, original recording, and uh, songs from Transformers the Movie. You've got the touch! Dun, dun, dun. You've got... The, oh, Stan Bush. And on there was Weird Al Yankovic's. You know, it was on there. It was good. Um, but I lost that, along with all my stuff when I moved. Again, when I moved to Maine, I lost all my music. That's why I'm starting my collection over again and doing all this. Um, and then, it's like... I got a bunch of soundtracks with my lots, like I said before, but I didn't really go out to buy them intentionally... Or, and so, and if I spend two one or two dollars on it at a thrift store, because yeah, yeah, I guess I'll pick it up, sure, it's cheap enough. That doesn't count. What is the first soundtrack that I bought for more than two dollars, intentionally, that I physically have right here that I can show you? Huh. That is the caveat to question one. You're like, but Steve, I make up the questions. You don't make up the questions. Shut up. I made up two of your questions on this little list right here. Remember? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I can help you make up caveats to one question. All right. The soundtrack I went out of my way to buy because it was on sale over at Bull Moose and there was no way I was passing it up. Boom. Soundtrack to Deadpool. Um, two record set. The vinyl. It's super pretty. Let's pull one of the discs out and I'll show you. Ooh, look at that. I don't got much on pretty vinyl, but uh, this is one of my few. Um, now they just have great songs on there like Shoop by salt and Pepper and all the songs from the movie like DMX. But it has a lot of uh, the incidental music on here, too. It's a great mix, because soundtracks, you get one or the other. You get either it's a compilation album of songs, or it's all background music and, uh, and score. This has got both. And the cool part is, is the score that's on here isn't just typical score. It's a very... It's by Junkie XL. So it's very electro, dance, uh, industrial kind of feel. So great, great soundtrack. Problem... The reason this was on sale, coming to find out later, is this pressing was known for being noisy, static, and having a lot of ground noise. And it is. Even brand new when I broke the seal, uh, cleaned it, it's not perfect. But you know what? All vinyl lives matter, so I love and cherish it forever. Mm -hmm. Love you, Deadpool. Love you too, Steve. All right. All right. Next up. Second question. The newest soundtrack to my collection. So I went to my Discogs, clicked on Date Added Newest, and uh, it was when I was VCLT, the Rocky Three. That is the most recent one I've gotten. I like it. Lots of good songs on here. Heard a lot of stuff I never heard before, and I was impressed by it. I thought I would just be Gonna Fly Now and Eye of the Tiger, things like that, but no, there's more stuff on there than that. I would recommend, if you haven't listened to the whole thing, listen to the whole thing. All right? All right. Number three. The one you listen to the most. There's one soundtrack that's my go-to soundtrack. Um, every time I'm in the car, I'm like, what do I want to listen to? Uh, okay, I'll listen to that. Because that's why I do the randomizing. I am a person where I'll probably only listen to like three records. Or I, I sit there. I cannot decide on what to listen to. And when I can't decide or what I want to listen to, I throw in Judgment Night. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just good to go. I mean, it's grunge and rock mixed with hip-hop artists. As you can see on there, Helmet and House of Pain. You know, uh, Slayer and Ice-T, Mud Honey and Sir Mix-a-Lot, Biohazard, Onyx. I mean, Living Color. Come on. And Run DMC, this is just the whole thing's great. You know, Pearl Jam and Cypress Hill together on the tracks? Why not? Love it, love it, love it. I would love to get this on vinyl someday, but the fact that I have it on CD and it's actual, look at this, it's the actual CD with the actual booklet. It's not a, all vinyl lives matter. It makes me so happy. I actually have this one. All right. <laughs> Judgment Night, most listened to one. As a caveat, I do also want um, the soundtrack to Spawn. 
Um, I used to have that also. And instead of having the hip hop artists and the grunge rock artists, it was hip hop artists and like techno, like, you know, and dance house electronical artists getting together. Uh, Crystal Method and whatever. It, it was good stuff. So I would love to get that on CD or whatever someday. Anyway, rambling on. My favorite composer. You're going to think I'm twisting the question around on this one too, but I'm not, if you think about it. Ferrante and Teicher. Yes, some, one of my favorite artists of all time. Now, check a look at Ferrante and Teicher. I actually have three different pressings of this exact same record of Ferrante and Teicher's. Um, let me show it this way. They're just three different pressings with three different labels. And since the labels are all looking different, I had to, uh, like, see this one is on an orange and black one. And then if you look down the back of that one... It's orange and pink. And then this one, I think, is a, a tan one. Let's take a look here. Yeah, the tan. So, anyway, Fontaine Teicher. In the 50s and 60s, man, I could list, and I could sit here for a while, the number of movies that their songs were on the soundtracks to. Um, going all the way from Exodus to The Apartment to... They were the go-to guys. It's like... Hello, Joe. You want to make a movie? Yes, we do. Let's make a movie. Who should we do the music? Get those Frontane Teicher blokes. Everybody likes them. So, yes, Frontane Teicher. The majority of their hits were themes from movies. And so, there you go. Next up, my favorite instrumental score. Yeah, I'm screwing this one over, too. And you're going to let me have it. Because you gave me the record, so you're allowed to let me have it. Okay. What is a score? Instrumental music... That's played in the backgrounds of scenes that helps change the mood and give you a feeling of the movie. You're watching what's going on on the screen, but what you're hearing is an instrumental sound that affects what's going on and your feeling of that scene. Am I right? You say yes, and then I'm... It is. Okay, okay. Then Axelof counts. Hmm? Axelof was instrumental. It was in the background of scenes. And it helped entice the mood of the visuals you were watching and enhance it. So Axel F, Beverly Hills Cop, counts. Favorite score, instrumental. Ha. <laughs> You're giving me that. All right. You gave me that. Okay. Um, next up, some really cool questions. An awesome movie with a horrible soundtrack. And then a soundtrack that's better than the movie. First one. Awesome movie with a horrible soundtrack. Now. I will, it's not a movie, it's a play. It was made into a movie, so I'm going to count it, because it was a movie at one point. Didn't like the movie as much as the original Broadway cast, but doesn't matter. The soundtrack recording from the original cast is a classic. But, people try to rake coals on it. And I'm going after Jesus Christ Superstar. Now, that was great, and you're like, but the soundtrack was awesome. You're right. The original one was. But this one, done by Pickwick. With really crappy people. Oh my god. For the first time, I, I was like, this is bad. This is this is low budget. Let's throw this out there and make some money. So, good movie. This is a bad soundtrack. Now, is it the official soundtrack? No. Never said that. It just says, an awesome movie with a, a horrible soundtrack. This is a horrible soundtrack to an awesome movie. So, there you go. This crappy Pickwick Sometimes vinyl lives matter barely. Next up. Um, soundtrack that is better than the movie. I could go with Judgment Night again. Because if you guys ever watched that movie, White Guy Takes the Wrong Exit and Heads into the Ghetto. What's gonna happen now with White Guy in the Black Ghetto? Yeah, that's not really a PC movie nowadays. And it's not funny or cute or anything. And uh, the movie wasn't good. Jerry Piven did a great job. And it, don't get me wrong. But I don't want to do a repeat. Here's another one. For you guys that are fans of the Transformers, the first movie was good. Every movie that went on afterwards got progressively worse. Um, I am a Transformers purist. I collected them when they first came out, came available in America in 1984, and I love them. I, I, I could debate and argue all the different storylines, plot lines from the, the cartoon to the animated series to the movies to the comic books, IDW publishing, all that. Love Transformers. But... I was not a, such of a fan of a lot of the things that they took liberties with in the movie Revenge of the Fallen. Um, it was... There, there it is. There it is. So, 
I did not like the movie as much as I really wanted to. I, I thought it was kind of bad in areas. I thought it was a lot of Michael Bay. I'm going to blow crap up and make funny jokes and give certain Transformers racist voices and stereotypes. And you know, that just wasn't him. But the soundtrack, Record Store Day release, beautiful green vinyl, Linkin Park, Green Day. The Fray, Nickelback, Use, Theory of a Dead Man, All American Rejects, Hoobastank, Stain, Avenged Sevenfold, and even Cheap Trick doing a cover of the original Transformers theme song. Emma's gotta love that, right? So, look at that. This is a bad movie with a great soundtrack. Okay. Song by your favorite artist and band featured on a soundtrack. Um. I'm going to uh, make number 8 and number 10 go together, because they go together. So I'm going to have a repeat on this one, Beth, and there's a reason for it. Soundtrack Grail Wants, slash, song by a favorite artist featured on a soundtrack. And what that is, is the soundtrack to the movie Harold and Maude. You guys know, and if not, maybe you should, and my top five people that I love and collect, right at the top is Cat Stevens. I have all of Cat Stevens's studio releases in America. I'm still missing one from Japan, missing some interview things, whatever, but I have them. But what I am missing in my collection is the soundtrack to the movie Harold and Maude. That whole soundtrack is a Cat Stevens joint. He pretty much is did the whole soundtrack. It's really a Cat Stevens record. I don't have that soundtrack, and it's I need it for my Cat Stevens collection. So mixing those two together, um, Harold and Maude, the soundtrack to the movie. Cat Stevens. I need it. I don't know why I'm doing that. I just... My brain. Alright, so then we go to number nine. Share a soundtrack you think everyone should own. Um, You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I never really thought about this one, but... A soundtrack everybody should own. I'll be honest. Any of the Star Wars. Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back... Return of the Jedi, those three soundtracks, the score is the movie. Yes, it's not as good as John Carpenter, John Williams isn't, or whatever. I watched your video. You can have your opinions, and you're wrong, and you're dumb. You're a dummy McPoopy face. But I love and respect that you have your own opinions. I do. And so, um, anything with John Williams. I mean, those, Jaws, Indiana Jones... I mean, I got a couple I have here. The ones I didn't think that he had any part of that he did. So, um, anything by John Williams, you got to pick it up. It's just beautiful, great music. If you took the word soundtrack off and said, "Here, here's a good classical album," you'd be like, "This is phenomenal!" And then you add that it's from a movie; it's even better. So, there we go. Thirteen minutes of me rambling, Beth. Am I the first one up? I don't know. If I'm the first one in the contest, I mean the the uh, thread, the uh, tag, because this is a tag thread. It's, right? Um, let me know. Um, but kudos, great, you know, ideas, fun thing to do. I got so many soundtracks. I didn't, haven't gone through them and I actually thought about them. This gave me a great opportunity to be like, what do I have? And, uh, think about them. So thank you, Beth. Take care. Peace out. Love you.